my favorite novels is William Faulkner's epic hunting story, The Bear. And like the young Isaac McCaslin, uh, who is the protagonist in the novel, I too grew up learning to hunt in the South. The opening lines of Faulkner's novel are some of the most classic in American fiction. There was a man and a dog, too, this time. Two beasts, counting old Ben the bear, and two men, counting Boone Hogenbeck, in whom ran some of the same blood that ran in Sam Fathers and the Chickasaw, although a plebeian strain of it. Well, only Sam and old Ben and the mongrel dog were taintless and incorruptible. Now, Isaac McCaslin was 16 years old. And for six years now, he had been a man's hunter. I, too, was a man's hunter. Uh, that is, I was an apprentice to my grandfather on our land in Caddo Parish, Louisiana. And I can remember many times walking across our great pasture and growing up on that land. And so I walked one time with my cousins across the pasture to the edge of the woods with my first shotgun for my first solo hunt. Here's how Faulkner describes Ike McCaslin's first solo hunt. The apparently impenetrable land slowly opened a widening inlet. He entered it. And the wilderness closed behind him as it had momentarily opened to welcome him. No fixed path. Earless, breathless, almost lightless. I remember those feelings. Well, Old Ben is a symbol for the vanishing wilderness in the South. And Ike not only learns hunting lore, but he learns the history of his land. He learns about misogyny and rape and slavery and theft from the Chickasaw, and he determines that the only way that he can break the curse is to relinquish his land. And so his wilderness is sold to a logging company for clear cutting. I remember my dad taking me deep into our woods. The words still reverberate today. Patrick, this is the last virgin stand of old growth trees in Caddo Parish. Smell the woods, listen. Because soon, this is going to become Interstate Highway 49. Today, my fa family leases our land for fracking for natural gas on the Haynesville Shale. And Old Ben, at the end of the novel, Old Ben is killed in an epic battle, a hand-to-hand -hand combat with Boone and the mongrel dog. Now, what does all this brief introduction to a uh, novel, to literature, have to do with my field of study? As a curriculum philosopher, uh, we turn to the etymology of the word curriculum for our research. And curriculum comes from a Latin word, curere, which translates to run the race course. It's both a verb and a noun, to run and a race course. Unfortunately, in schools and the university, we, are, we truncate the meaning of curriculum and we re reduce it just to the noun, the lesson plan, the syllabus, the test, the text, the ancillaries. When we don't include the verb, we reduce curriculum to inert information. Now, the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead said as much in his 1929 book, The Aims of Education. Whitehead wrote that there's three steps of curriculum development, romance, precision, and generalization. And of course, generalization and mastery, that's our goal. However, he said, without romance, meaning a passionate connection to the subject matter, connecting my story in Louisiana with Isaac McCaslin in the novel, without that connection, the curriculum is just inert information. So for curriculum philosophers like myself, we turn especially to the existentialists, Kierkegaard, Sartre, Camus, de Beauvoir, who taught us that it is primarily through literature and the arts that we can most understand this running the race course of life. And how do we do this, this curare? I think it's going to be more familiar to you once I give an example. Curare has a four-step process. Our first step is called the regressive moment. We go back into the novel. We go back into history. We dwell there, but we do not categorize names, dates, and places, as unfortunately in too many history classes we do. We have to connect the subject matter to the present, to our life and our life experiences, and project to the future. The integration of past, present, and future is what we call our fourth step, 
the synthetical moment. This is the aha moment of Pythagoras discovering the 3-4-5 right triangle. It's individuation for Carl Jung. It's the gestalt in psychology. In Christian theology, it's Jesus Christ, the prolepsis. Always was, is now, and forever will be. In Jewish theology, it's the Seder meal. What happened once upon a time happens all the time. It's reincarnation for Hindus. It's a Hajj for Muslims. And for William Faulkner, who famously said, there's no such thing really as was because the past is.